What's cracking, guys? Omar Isaf here, here on the casting couch with Greg Knuckles. <laughs> Greg, how you doing, my man? I'm. I guess I'm ready to be casted. I, <laughs> I, I wasn't. I wasn't aware this was happening, but my body is ready. Well, we're at Nigel's place. I don't know if you know that they filmed the casting couch stuff here. I didn't. Things you know. Things well, you find out along the way. Interesting. Talking about when something. When was the last time it was wiped down? Uh, I think a couple hours ago. Okay. I think we're good. Okay, so good. talking about another important topic. I want to talk about bodybuilders. And I want to talk about, this is a misconception, like people look at you and uh, what you write about, you know, you got a really good powerlifting total, what's your total? 1885. Right, and, and they know you, you have your website Strength Theory, that you're like a science guy, right, mm -hmm. evidence, uh, you know, what does the literature say, but then, uh, you know, they also think, therefore, that you don't respect maybe what bodybuilders have to mm -hmm. offer or people in the trenches, and that's not the case at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and so maybe the question uh, today should be, uh, you know, should you listen to the advice bodybuilders give yeah. and, uh, you know, in what context? Because yeah. they're they're kind of, you know, before the biggest bro in the gym is who you listen to you, and now there's a lot of people that are like science motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. So what's your opinion on this? Should you listen to the big dude in the gym and what are some of maybe limitations of research? Well, okay, so, so first, um, when people think like evidence-based practice, they, they kind of have the wrong idea of evidence. Uh, so there are different levels of it. The The top would be uh, like a meta-analysis or a systematic review, pooling the results of a lot of studies. After that, it would be um, randomized controlled trials, preferably double-blind, and then kind of like on down from there. Um, but it is important to note that observational evidence and practitioner experience uh, do still very much factor into the evidence-based um, uh, model of uh, uh, practicing, well, really any evidence-based practice. Um, so, like, just because you you care about learning about the science doesn't necessarily well absolutely doesn't mean that you should uh, just rule out you know your own experience and um, just anecdotal evidence that you pick up from other people uh, with that being said there are also obviously pitfalls to like only getting your information from the biggest guy in the gym because right. you know like he could have just definitely picked the right parents yeah. and uh, definitely picked the mm -hmm. right uh, vitamin S supplier <laughs> right and uh, so there are obviously pitfalls there, but, but that doesn't necessarily mean you should rule it out. Um, and there are certain things, Greg, though, yeah. too, that like bodybuilders have said for a while, mm -hmm. and people thought they were bro signs, yeah. but then the research actually shows that they were right in the first place. Right. Like we were talking before, uh, we filmed this about metabolic stress and uh, getting a pump. Mm -hmm. What were you saying about that? Like before, people used mm -hmm. to call that like bro signs, like, oh, just getting a pump won't do anything towards yeah. building muscle. What's the research show? Uh, well, yeah, this was one of the things that... Uh, has started becoming mainstream in the last five years or so, which bodybuilders have known for a long, long time that uh, getting the pump, um, metabolic stress in the muscles uh, does um, cause muscle hypertrophy. Uh, they, they found in the literature that in general it doesn't work quite as well as heavier loading, even though a recent study by Brad Schoenfeld uh, did show that sets of 30 cause just as much muscle growth as uh, sets of 10. So that, that tide is even shifting more towards higher and loader, lower loading um, being more similar in terms of muscle growth. And also um, another thing that's kind of important is uh, just simply the, the total amount of training volume you can handle, uh, the total number of hard sets you can get in per muscle group, um, and also training pretty close to failure. And so, uh, you know, there are only but so many like really tough sets of three to five you can do in a workout. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, you can knock out sets of 10 to 30 reps you know, basically until the cows come home. Uh, I'm from the South, forgive me. <laughs> forgive uh, that reference. But, but yeah, so, um, you know, it, it helps. One, it does cause muscle hypertrophy. Two, uh, it generally helps you tolerate higher training volumes, which is also beneficial for hypertrophy. And then, Greg, maybe also another thing, uh, supporting another example that bodybuilders, obviously, if you make it your life practice to try and build muscle, yeah. you'll, you'll pick up, you know, things yeah. along the way. You're yeah, like, that's, that, that's so ridiculous to me. Like, uh... It, We're saying the mind muscle connection. Happens. Yeah, it's it's an entire sport where like the whole purpose of it is to get as big and jacked as possible. Like that that is the sport in a nutshell. That's like you know that's like saying a pro bodybuilder doesn't know anything about building muscle. That's like saying Steph Curry doesn't know anything about a jump shot. Like right. like that is the whole point of the sport. So you know there are probably some things that are ineffective, just kind of like traditions that have been picked up on the way. But successful bodybuilders on the whole, if they're going to be successful they have to be doing more right than they're doing wrong. I mean, 
it's impossible for it to be otherwise. Maybe uh, another final example, the idea we're saying about the mind-muscle mm -hmm. connection where people thought that was also bro science, yeah. but where you gotta like feel the muscle mm -hmm. uh, for it to grow. Can you get into that in the literature and yeah. what that means too? Yeah, so, so what they found in cueing research is uh, external cues that are kind of uh, like, like, like what you're gonna do with the bar. So for bench press, it might be throw the bar through the ceiling, something like that. Uh, that tends to help performance more but they've actually found that internal cues, like focusing on what part of your body is doing, like feeling a muscle contract, uh, does actually increase muscle activation. So, uh, you know, if you're doing bicep curls and you're focusing on feeling that muscle contract instead of just like throwing up as much weight as you possibly can. With your lower back, yeah. Yeah, that, that does actually increase muscle activation, which could lead to more hypertrophy. So it's another example of the yeah. body, something that they've been saying for a long for time. For a long time. Then the literature, the evidence yeah. supports it eventually. Yeah. Uh, Greg, I think we've given uh, quite a few examples of things in the past that maybe people regard as bro science just because we didn't have the evidence to support it, but then later uh, we get the evidence. Overall, uh, thinking about bodybuilders, should you take their advice, you would say what? That they do have legitimate experience yeah. to offer. You have to balance it with what the literature currently says. Yeah. Uh, and have a what critical thinking skills, as you said, where you've got to be wary of like traditions or some things that they might be incorrect about, right? Yeah, so, so I would say just some general rules of thumb. Um, if, well, if, if people who are successful in the sport are saying something and the literature says the same thing, like obviously do it. Yeah. Um, if the people who are being successful in the sport are saying one thing and the literature says something else, but it's studies done on say like a completely different population, like geriatric people or completely untrained people, then uh, you know there, there may actually be some benefit to it and it just hasn't been studied in the right population. Uh, and that's something to, you know, it may be worth a shot, but it's worth being wary of. Um, things that uh, bodybuilders are saying that really haven't been directly studied yet, um, I would probably take their advice on most of that. Um, and then things where they're saying something and there's no plausible physiological <laughs> mechanism right. and the literature in a relevant population is strongly opposed to it. Uh, that's probably just something that's been picked up as traditional along the way and could probably be discarded. Perfect. Greg, I think you laid it down. I think it's important to show both sides, mm -hmm. right? Uh, for On your end to break that stereotype where people, it's like, oh, if you study science, like you don't respect what bodybuilders yeah. you have to say, right? Uh, when that's not the case at all. No. Guys, we're gonna wrap this up. I want you to like this video. We got a whole bunch of videos with Greg Knuckles along the way. Greg, thanks for filming. Thanks for having me. Again, if you like it, all toilet viewers, you should be liking the video, okay? You're already here at the end. Let's face it, you watched the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you should like the video. And uh, we'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.